Hey, right, good morning. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I train uh, my dog here, Gage, how to sit steady, flush, and shot. Um, it's extremely easy. All you need is your whistle, two bumpers. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. Um, the imperative thing here is you have to make sure that your dog is uh, whistle trained and can sit in the midst of distraction. All right? It's a huge distraction when any type of bird gets up and flushes uh, out of cover and you have to get that dog to be able to sit not only through the flush but through the shot and then ultimately the release. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how uh, I did this with him. You'll notice he has no e-collar on. All right, you can do this without a collar. It, it does not require collar pressure at all. Um, you also notice too that I'm in my front yard. This is where he initially got trained at. Now, once he gets done with yard work, then I'll move over to the field and I can actually put birds in uh, to get him flush and that kind of thing. If you go straight to birds, you're gonna get nothing but you're gonna get nothing but frustrated. All right. So my suggestion is to do it here in the in the yard and then move over to the field. So and I'll go over here in a minute. Uh, you know how we get from the yard to the field and then how to how to put birds to sleep so you can actually work your dog. So all we're going to do, uh, the key to this is like I said, he's got to be already working to the whistle to be able to sit and all we're going to do is we're going to go up, we're going to throw one bumper out in front like it's a flushing bird and at that exact same time I'm going to hit the whistle. All right, once he sits then I'm going to take that second bumper and I'm going to throw it behind him. That's his reward. All right, you do not let him go after the uh, the bumper that gets thrown. All right, he's going to get rewarded, but it's not going to be with the one that goes up. Now, once you move over to birds, yeah, then that's fine. Then we'll move over to that. Uh, as soon as I show you what we do with this, I'll show. I'll move over to the launcher, and then I'll show you how we work with the launcher. So it's as simple as this. We're going to start with him at heel. Heel. Yeah. And we're just going to walk along. And if you don't have him trained to a whistle, you can work with it sit, but obviously a whistle is going to be better out in the field. All right. So you're just going to go ahead and walk along. Heel. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. That a boy. Good boy. Heel. Heel. Sit. Leave it. Good. Sit. Heel. Same thing, just walking along right at heel. As the bird goes up, as the bird goes up, whistle gets blown, and then he gets his reward as long as he sits. Heel. Okay, good boy, good boy, got a boy. Here, good boy. So you'll notice that's extremely easy. Um, if you have any issues with it, uh, you know, just work it a little bit of a time. If he does not sit for when you throw that bumper, pick the bumper back up, do the same thing again. Um, you know, what you want to get him to do is you eventually want him to sit there longer. So as I throw that bumper, I may let it sit there for 10, 15, 30 seconds. And then as long as he does that, then he's gonna get his reward bumper. So that's the important piece with that. Um, the next thing I'm going to go over is the quartering. Gage, here. Heel. Sit. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can work on quartering. Uh, I like to work on this out in a bigger field. And what you'll do is you'll take a couple of bumpers and you'll throw them uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 yards to your right and left. Um, you, know, you can do this with dead birds too, but I, I work with it on bumpers just to begin with. And all we're going to do is you're going to have your command for your dog to start hunting. Right? So for him, um, he's used to running blind, so literally all I'll do is I'll put my hand down and I'll say, hunt, and then he'll take off. You see, he took off right there. So all we're going to do, a dog will, should naturally want to work in front of you. Okay? You, you want to be able to do hand signals as well okay, to get him to push to one side of the field or the other. All right? So again, it's very important to the whistle. He's trained to for uh, two whistles, it, for his two little bleeps, the, for that is to come back uh, to me.
but he also knows to differentiate if we're upland hunting he knows that means hey i need to stop the direction i'm going and i need to turn and i need to go back the other direction all right uh, we want him to work within that 15 to 20 yards because if he pops obviously if he pops a bird we don't want that bird popping up at already 30 yards because by the time you get your gun up and everything else now he's you know he's already at 35 or 40 plus yards so we want him in that 15 to 20 yard range so all i'm going to do he go is grab a couple of bumpers here. And I'm just going to toss bumpers out to my side. Initially, I'm just going to let him see them. Just like so. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to line him up. Hunt, hunt. calling him off of those so that way you could see how I was working him with my hands. He'll sit. Leave it. Hunt it up. Good boy. You'll notice he takes off on that hunt command. He knows what he's doing. He'll sit. Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. And what you're getting to do is you kind of want these bumpers to be hidden so he has to search for them a little bit. Again, this is out in a flat yard. But, you know, you want him to, to get used to trusting you that hey if i'm telling you to go one side or the other i need you to hunt that cover uh, what a lot of people do especially like the uh, spaniel guys is they'll put two guys out uh both about 20 yards on each side to act as shooters and they'll walk with birds in their hands you know and they'll walk along and i don't have to do anything as a handler these guys on the outside will you know do the hup, 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 and it'll get that dog used to going back and forth working that quartering um, as you saw here in the yard, I had to push him, but naturally when we go out and we hunt, he naturally quarters back and forth, and he hits about that 20 to 25 yard mark, and then he knows enough to turn and come back forth and work both sides of the field. Um, when I'm training with birds, obviously um, I'm gonna plant him in some thicker cover because I want him to understand that as long as he goes to that thick cover, that's where he's gonna find the birds at. So he knows if he sees thick cover to go over there and look because he's had success there in the past. So, next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to turn the, uh, the camera over, and I'm going to move it here. You can see my launcher here set up. So, I'm just going to kind of put here into action, you know, what, what we're talking about with this whole sit. Now, again, he's trained to this, and some guys will say, oh, well, that's a controlled environment and everything else. Well, yeah, you want it to be controlled, because once you get out into the field, you lose a lot of that control. So having a controlled environment here where you can make that correction if need be. Gage, here. Come here. Sit. Alright. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to release him. He's, he's going to go after that launcher. He's done this before so he knows what's going to go on. But as soon as he gets close to that, I'm going to release the launcher and then I'm going to sit him. Here we go, here we go, catch it up. That a boy. You know, like I said, he, he knows what's coming out of that launcher. Catch it up. That a boy, here. Sit. Leave it. You know, and I, I work with these launchers for, uh, for hunt tests and ducks, but they work fine for pheasants. Um, you can get the actual, you know, quail launchers and whatever, and you can use those as well. But this works just as good for the yard work. It just it gets him used to that that noise of a bird flushing and that you know that distraction and that excitedness of something going from stationary to moving and I'm not the one doing it. But you'll notice though how I'm working up to all that. So then when we go out to the field, obviously, you know, he doesn't even really need the whistle anymore because nine times out of ten he'll just sit with without the whistle when a bird goes up, uh, which is what I want him to do. So uh, keeping him. 
keeping him safe from you know launching up at those birds and trying to grab a hold of them uh, and risk getting shot by a gun. So he knows that as soon as he goes up, butt goes on the ground and he's marking that bird. So as that bird goes down, uh, he's not losing sight of it. You know that way, if multiples go down, he can see them all from where he's sitting. Brings one back, and then I kick him off for the next one. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much upland. You know, down and dirty. Um, you know, uh, and that's yeah, pretty much about it. As for uh, planting birds, uh, there's a couple of good videos out there. Um, really, all you're going to do is you're going to take that bird. Uh, if you're using a pheasant, all you're going to do is you're going to take that that head, tuck it underneath the wing. And then you're going to take the legs and you're going to stretch those legs out until you feel them relax. All right? Pheasants are a big bird. You can't really rock them to sleep like you can a chucker or a, or a quail. You can, but just it takes a lot more work. Um, another thing I do with pheasants is I'll take rubber bands and I'll rubber band their feet together. That way they can't run if I plant them. Um, and that way it, it forces them to flush. Because uh, when I take him out, you know, I'm running anywhere between... You know six to twelve birds and it's taken me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to get from the last bird i planted back to the first and then run through the whole gamut of birds that i put out so i don't want those pheasants running on him um, especially if you're paying for them if uh you know the quail and the chucker and stuff yeah they'll run but they won't run very far uh, when you put them to sleep as for putting chucker and quail to sleep what you're going to do is you're going to tuck the head under the wing and then you're going to put them between your your uh your middle and your ring finger, put their head between there, and then you're just gonna you're gonna rock them back and forth. Uh, you can do that with the quail. You don't even need to tuck their head. With the chucker, I tuck their head, or I, excuse me, I tuck their head underneath the wing, and then I shake them up real good, and then you place them down in the cover, and then just get away, and they'll just stay there. Uh, I've had them stay planted for you know 45 minutes to an hour, and I haven't had any issues. So, if you got any other questions, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them for you.